Hello there, you very attractive person here. This is Chris from Techspert, and I'm here with Nubia's new Z20 smartphone, a very interesting dual screen device. Looks absolutely mental. Gonna get it fully unboxed now, check out all the features, and take a good old tour of exactly why it has two screens instead of just the standard one. The phone is actually available from today for £499 here in the UK or 549 if you live in the US. Uh, so let's see, we've got some manual quick start documentation shenanigans here. Bit of porky pin action, always good to see. It looks like you get a screen protector for uh, the back end because of course it's got a screen on that side as well. You've also got the option of a flexible transparent uh, rubbery case as well just to add a little bit of extra protection. There's the actual device itself in all of its weird and wonderful glory. Just stick that aside for a sec. The last thing in here is another box and this I'm guessing will have charging cables and all the other usual shenanigans. Yep so it's a two pin adapter this one because it is a European review model not the full on UK. If you do buy it in the UK you would hopefully get the, uh, the standard three pin. And you get a lovely bright red uh, charging cable a la OnePlus uh, and of course it is good old type C. And you've got a bit of uh, USB type C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack dongle action as well. So there mustn't be an actual headphone port on the phone itself, sadly. So that right there is what you get in the box. Now it's time to check out this rather mad smartphone. So, uh, oh, it's already turning itself on. A little uh, premature there, Mr. Nubia Z20. Right, so where to begin? Well, this is, of course, the front of the handset. Uh, as you can see there, nice full view finish. That screen stretches almost to the very, very edges, just curves ever so slightly uh, as you get to the left and the right edges there as well. Um, feels like a good size in the hand, actually. You have just come from the OnePlus 70 Pro and devices like that which are a little bit more sizable. So uh, but it's a 6.42 inch uh, means it feels relatively compact even though it's obviously not. Flip it around to the back and you've got a very similar finish to the front. It once again curves around neatly around those edges. Uh, you do of course get your triple lens camera there. Uh, we'll dive into that in a bit. And there's the second display as well. I don't know if you can just about make out, out the, uh, the edges of it there. Uh, built in the rear end. Of course you've got your Nubia Brandon down at the bottom. It's Gorilla Glass 5 on both the front and the back with a nice bit of aluminium framing in between. Uh, so it should prove suitably rugged. Uh, hopefully we'll survive all scratches, scuffs and all the rest of it. And also another weird little design quirk is the fact that it actually has a fingerprint sensor edge mounted there on the right side and also the left side as well. So it doesn't matter which way around you're holding it, uh, what hand you use normally, you basically got a way of unlocking it nice and quick. And you grab it in a couple of different hues as well, twilight blue or black. This is the black model uh, right there. So as you can see, the glass and the frame and everything all kind of blend in quite nicely. It looks like uh, basically a one piece device almost. So just running through the setup process here on the Nubia Z20, as you can see there, it's now asking me if I want to enroll my finger and which sensor I actually want to use to enroll it. Uh, so I guess I'll enroll my finger on this one and move my thumb on that one, though actually probably want to enroll my finger on this one as well. Uh, so when I'm using it upside down, I can still unlock it all right. Uh, I don't really know, to be honest. And I'm guessing you could enroll uh, multiple fingers on each sensor. So I'll just kind of do a little bit of everything and see what works. Right, so we've finished setting up the Nubia Z20, as you can see there, just enjoying the nice 6.42 inch Full HD plus AMOLED display. Very nice indeed. Uh, but of course, as you might notice, there is a little reverse icon right here. So we just give that a little tap. What it'll then do is we'll switch over Ta -da, to the rear mounted screen instead. It's a 5.1 inch, so obviously a lot smaller. And you may well be asking yourself, what actually is the point of that? When you've got a uh, gorgeous 6.4 inch uh, AMOLED display around front, why would you want this dinky little rear one? Well, that's a question I'm gonna attempt to answer right now. I don't know if you guys remember the Yotta phone uh, from a few years ago. It actually got a sequel, the Yotta phone too as well. That also had a rear mounted display. Uh, it was an e-ink display. It was primarily supposed to be used for just checking notifications, uh, reading, things like that, low powered tasks where you could basically not use the main display and therefore save on battery power. And as you can see there is a fully functional screen. You can stream video on it. You can do whatever you like, load all of your usual apps. Though of course, why would you do that when you've got that gorgeous 6.4 inch AMOLED display around the other side? The first of one of the obvious advantages is the fact that you don't need a selfie camera around the front of the Nubia Z20. So you've got this lovely full view finish because of course, all you need to do is just flip it around and then just activate that camera app. And as you can see, you can just use that really display to actually see what you're doing when you're taking a selfie. So that's quite a neat little idea. It's a similar sort of solution to what Isus did with his Zenfone 6. I actually had the rear camera flip around to the front uh, to again negate the need to actually have 
a selfie camera at all. And because selfie cameras tend to be a bit crap compared with the standard rear camera, it's a really good solution. It means you can take really nice looking selfies, hopefully as long as the camera isn't rubbish. So what's some of the other uses of this dual display? Well, if you dive into the settings, we'll probably find a few more little features scrolled away. The OS you get is actually, it's Android Pie on board. It's not quite Android 10 just yet, but hopefully it'll get an update soon. And it's got Nubia UI 7 slapped on top, which adds quite a lot of the bonus functionality. I've often uh, had a little bit of a play. It looks like a fairly sort of stock version of Android, to be fair. You've got your usual apps tree and everything. It doesn't look like they've messed around too much with the theme or anything. But as you can see here, they have added a few bonus features. So, for instance, the always on display feature, this is using this secondary screen. Uh, you can set up whichever one you want. As you can see there, you've got a variety to choose from. As you can see, once you've chosen your always on display as well, you can select to have it either on the primary screen, the secondary screen, or both for some reason. Not really sure why you'd want both screens showing the timing notifications. It was a bit of a waste of battery life. So let's just select a secondary. You can actually have a different always on display on that primary screen and that secondary screen if you want to. So for instance, there's the one I've just set, the jellyfish one. And on the primary screen, it's the default, the, uh, the funky little fish. Um, so yeah, again, not really sure why you would want that, but let's uh, just take this one off. So as you can see there, you can fully customize. You can even customize the time uh, that the always on display is active and uh, the duration of it, the brightness levels. The customization is fantastic. You can actually set your own video, your own uh, GIF image to pop up, all kinds of shenanigans, really good stuff. And now when we power down, uh, good old jellyfish pops up there in the secondary and there's nothing on the primary, so that's good. And uh, another thing I've just realized as well is that your fingerprint data works on either of the scanners. You don't have to register the same fingerprint twice or anything, so that's a relief as well. And which way you actually hold on the phone will determine which screen pops into life as well. So as you can see there, I'm clutching it that way, the secondary screen pops up. If I'm holding it this way, then the primary screen pops up as well. So again, it's just those little features that at least make it a little bit more usable. You can also shift around at that switch screen button or you can completely deactivate it if you want uh, because it doesn't really matter there is a screen switch icon right there in the notifications bar as you can see so you don't need it on there on your desktops full time. Now another use for that secondary screen is the screen scene lighting effect. As you can see, when you're receiving calls or any other shenanigans is going on, it can actually uh, do a little funky light effect. So let's do that. So I'm actually playing some music just via the Amazon Music app. And as you can see there, we are getting the funky light pattern on the go in the back. It's a veritable mini disco up in here. Uh, and of course you can change the light effect as well if you're not really a fan of triangles. And you get funky lighting effects as well when you're gaming. So for instance, just loading up asphalt and as you can see around the back we now have this very, very uh, interesting little sort of chipboard display popping into life. Speaking of gaming, you do of course get that fantastic game space feature which you can uh, dive into here in the notifications bar. Just get that active game space. As you can see there, it can actually accelerate your performance. Not that you'll probably need it because this bad boy's got a Snapdragon 855 Plus chipset backed by eight gigs of RAM. So all of your games should run absolutely beautifully. And as you can see there, you can pull out the uh, game space toolbar at any point and that just gives you loads and loads of different features such as for instance, the ability to take a, a snapshot. You got notifications blocking as well if you do not want to be interrupted at all. And as you can see there, you can even monitor your core temperature and everything too. And when you're gaming, you can actually use that a touch screen as a kind of a trigger pad as it were so as you can see there you can move them around to suit exactly your finger placement increase the size decrease the size so now as you can see I'm in the game I'm actually using that rear pad as the boost function and the brake as well so uh, yeah it's an extra bit of uh, bit of control if you want it. And unsurprisingly, Asphalt is playing like an absolute mother. Yeah, the Nubia Z20 should be good for all of your PUBGs, uh, whatever other games you want to play. Sorry, I'm not doing very well here because it's <laughs> tilt controls and I'm still trying to keep the phone vaguely in uh, view of the camera. Although, yeah, I do pretty much just suck at racing games as well. I'm going to give up on that. Another slightly bonkers dual screen feature here on the Nubia Z20 is the ability to chuck an app to the opposite screen. So for instance, we're on the rear screen. Uh, we find a YouTube video that we really want to watch, but we don't want to watch it on this dinky little display. We want to watch it on the, uh, the big screen. All you need to do is do a three finger chuck motion like this. As you can see there, it disappears. And then we can switch the screen. 
and go over to the main display and there it is until I accidentally minimize it, hooray. So right there is the secondary display here on the Nubia Z20. As you can see, it's quite handy for actually being able to use the rear camera as a selfie camera. The rest of the features are generally just sort of nice to have. But the great thing is the rest of the Z20 is a great smartphone as well, especially for that 500 pound asking price. Of course, you've got that Snapdragon 855 Plus chipset and the 8 gigs of RAM, which makes the gaming really, really good. I do like the UI. I think it's really, really nice that they've kept a sort of a, a stock Android feel with just extra features chucked in, kind of similar to the new Zen UI as well. You've got a bit of pressure edge sensor action on the go so just give the edges a squeeze similar to the pixel smartphones and as you can see there minimizes everything down you can actually fully customize the actions uh, in here as well so it's called the pressure border feature as you can see there you can do a long grip a short squeeze things like that and turn on various different bits it's also a mighty 4000 milliamp cell stuffed away in here so hopefully the battery life should last you all day even with that secondary display we'll of course be testing that out in depth for my full review, so stay tuned for that. You've got the usual battery management features and everything thrust on there as well, and 27 watt fast charger, though it doesn't support wireless. Oh, and storage as well, before I forget, it's 128 gigs of storage chucked on there. So as you can see, a fair amount of that is free for your media apps and what have you. Now let's flip around to that rear display again. We'll actually talk about the triple lens camera. So it's a similar sort of setup to lots of rivals like the OnePlus 7T, shenanigans like that. So it's a 48 megapixel primary lens, f1.7 with optical image stabilization built in. And that's backed by a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, which you can flip to with a quick tap of this icon here. And also an eight megapixel telephoto lens. It offers a three times optical zoom, as you can see there. Or you can also get a bit of up to five times or even 10 times hybrid zoom on the go if you really, really want to zoom in very far indeed. And of course, as you'd expect, you've got a whole bunch of bonus features. So you've got full pro controls if you want to uh, manually mess around with various levels, the focus, the ISO levels, all that kind of shenanigans. Camera family is basically just a bunch of extra bonus modes. So as you can see there, you can clone yourself. Hold the camera, does not move to take the first. Okay, whatever that means. Light draw, of course, time lapse, slow motion, all the usual stuff. You've got a full dedicated night mode on there as well for taking low light shots. And you've got your portrait snapper as well. And if we switch to video, I believe that Nubia said in its press release, you can take up to 8K resolution video with this crazy thing. Um, so yeah, so as you can see there, 8K beta, recommended for outdoor use. Um, I don't know anyone who's got an 8K TV, and obviously these displays do not support 8K, so I'm not really sure what the point is, but um, you've got usual 4K at up to 60 frames per second, so that's pretty good. And then of course, if we power off the Nubia Z20 and then switch around to that rear screen, you can then take the selfies as we briefly demonstrated before. You've got, of course, full pro controls and everything on there as well, which you usually don't really get for the selfie camera. Portrait mode, of course, again, you've got the dedicated triple N setup, so it should hopefully capture uh, you nice and cleanly and then blur out the background. And you can swap, of course, to that ultra wide angle lens if you want to catch a uh, lovely photo of you and your chums having lots of great times, or just me and the camera alone in my studio. Hooray! Best of buds! Because you can't swap to the telephoto lens when you're using it in this selfie mode, which kind of makes sense because why would you want to capture a really, really, really up close shot? of your beard or nostril hairs or whatever. You've got the full HDR supports and everything. And of course, as I mentioned before, you can shoot video at that full 4K. I oh, know you can't. <laughs> no, I was talking out of my arsehole apparently. Uh, no, for some reason, when it's in selfie mode, you can only shoot at up to 1080p. It's decided it doesn't want to do 4K, despite the fact it's clearly got uh, the capability, so that's a bit weird, but there you go. So there you have it, the Nubia Z20, coming to the UK right now, in fact, uh, for £500, uh, Europe for €500, Euros, and US for $550. So it's a very interesting a little handset. Even if you're not entirely sold on that secondary display, it's still got a lot going for it. Some really strong specs, including that 855 Plus chipset. Uh, nice, uh, sort of stockish version of Android Pie with, of course, the Nubia UI on the top, and a whole bunch of extra functionality, including the uh, the old edge pressure effort. Uh, the, yeah, the display tech seems really nice and it's, I guess it's something a bit different, isn't it? So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you tempted by the Nubia Z20 as an alternative to the likes of the, uh, the OnePlus 7T, etc, etc. Definitely be great to hear your thoughts. And please do pop subscribe and ding that notification as well for more on the latest greatest mobile tech. Cheers everyone. Love you.